Hello everyone, I'm Dark Aaron, and uh, this is going to be my discussion slash review type thing about uh, Elden Ring and my experiences with it thus far. Uh, so my history, just to let you know, of, of Soulsborne style games in general. Uh, I didn't really play uh, the original uh, series, a couple of games, uh, but I did play Dark Souls 3 uh, enough to beat it. Not, not the DLC, but <laughs> the main game. I beat the main game. Uh, I actually started the whole series with Bloodborne, um, and I got through most of that game. I didn't quite beat it, but I got through a large portion of it. And I've also played Sekiro. Uh, and I played that about halfway through. And I ended up just giving up on the games eventually because of issues I'll get to into later. But um, I, I've got about 30 hours into uh, Elden Ring at this point, And I wanted to get about that far into it uh, before I discussed it because I wanted to make sure that I was fairly well informed about how the game is and i am still playing it on my streams every weekend <laughs> on my channel you can find it here on the same channel i'll link to the playlist all that stuff uh notifications all that stuff to make sure you, you know that i'm streaming anyway that's enough of that uh enough of the plugs there for a moment uh i play the game on pc and i uh, started playing the game a little bit later uh, than everyone else um so i actually came in after the huge uh, major uh, performance issues that PC had. Because I heard I heard it in, from, from people I know that uh, the game had some performance issues on PC at, at launch, uh, but they have supposedly been fixed at this point, and I've never had a big issue with anything. There's, I think there was one area in the game where the frame rate dipped a little bit, uh, but nothing where the game became unplayable or even where it became a nuisance for me uh, fighting enemies and things like that. It was just a, a little bit of a noticeable frame dip. So I'll cover some of the basics before I get too far into it, uh, because there's one portion of the game that I'm going to talk about in depth and at length that's probably going to take up the majority of this video. So so first of all, the sound, the uh, music in the game is very, very good, as is typical of a FromSoft game. Uh, it's amazing music, especially for the bosses, of course. Um, if you're familiar with the music from the Soulsborne series and from soft games in general, you kind of know what you're getting into with this. It's the same kind of orchestral choir kind of music and stuff like that. So it's very uplifting and very, <laughs> very action packed and gets you really into the fight and everything like that. And beyond that, the sound design is really good as well because, um, the game makes it very apparent to you through the sound with what's happening. You can hear the guys around you walking around or just doing other things. Uh, the secrets, some the secrets I found in the game have largely been because I could hear something on the other side of a wall, but I couldn't find a way to get to it. So I was like, there has to be a secret wall here somewhere. Um, so that's very nice. And the game makes it very apparent that you are entering a dangerous area or about to become attacked by somebody. Uh, it doesn't give you some big flashing indicator um, like games typically do these days, but uh, you can just detect that the music's changing. And from that music change, you can tell, okay, some enemy is near me and they're becoming suspicious and they're about to start attacking me. Uh, so it's a very clear indicator <laughs> that that you're getting in trouble. And it's just from the sound design, which is very nice. And of course, you can just look, if you look at any, watch any trailer, <laughs> any gunplay trailer of this game or any videos of people playing this game, uh, you can tell the graphics are amazing. It, they're super awesome. Um, Especially on the PC, I'm, I'm, I'm like I said, luckily I'm playing on the PC and I have a system good enough to play it at very, very high settings. And it just looks incredible. The draw distance in the game is insane. You know, and, and, and from, again, from a, like, this is a design standpoint, not just a graphical uh, techno technology level thing. This, the design is just insanely incredible too, you know. Uh, they have their, their usual Dark Souls-esque type of stuff. In fact, there are many things in the game that are taken from other Dark Souls, other FromSoft games uh, in terms of like outfits and weapons and, and enemies and things like that. Uh, but all the stuff that's new and fresh is very much this game. Um, and it's very, very cool. They have their own little aesthetic they're going for. It's very tree, very tree-ish. Uh, lots of branches and roots and, and leaves and things of that nature. Uh, so it, it's a very good aesthetic. I, I love it as a fantasy aesthetic. And now for the topic uh, that I'll spend a lot of time talking about because it's a huge deal to me. That's a large reason why I think this game is doing well. And it is doing insanely well, uh, by the way. Uh, so this is a, an open world game. So this is basically 
uh, FromSoft uh, putting, I, I would say dipping their toes, but jumping, uh, that tipping their toes is not enough of a descriptor of that. They're, they're cannonball diving into uh, the, <laughs> the world of open world games. Um, and I think they, they've really uh, kind of nailed it. Uh, you can explore at will. You can go find new and exciting areas. Of course, those areas could potentially be exciting because they're way, way outside your power level. Uh, but you'll find that out pretty quickly. <laughs> and you can just turn around and leave. <laughs> you, you have, you're, you're not locked in. And that solves a, a major issue I've had with um, past Soulsborne's games. And a, a large reason why I, I've skipped beating some of them and haven't gone back to play other ones like i haven't gone back to play demon souls even with the remaster um you know i have, <laughs> haven't played the first or second dark souls games uh and there's a reason for that um <clears throat> i i beat dark souls 3 mainly because i challenged myself to do it and because i was making i'm making videos and the last video for it is coming out i promise uh <clears throat> but uh you know, I almost get. Uh, I gave up on the other two I played, Sekiro and Bloodborne, and the reason why is because um, I get how, how do I say? I get kind of frustrated when I feel like the game is trying to make a section that is a huge pain in the ass, and I hate it. Uh, and the fact that the Soulsborne games in the past have largely been designed as, and I. I'm going to hopefully simplify it a little bit. I know there are branching pathways. I know there are alternate, some alternate routes you can kind of take in these games. But if you're if you're honest with it, the, the, these games are largely like one just one this long hallway. You're just following the long hallway uh, down the path, and this is where you're going. And for some reason, every single one of these games um, has a section of the hallway which is such a massive pain in the ass that even people who like the games think it suck. Thinks it sucks. They're proper English on that. Um, every game has a section. You know what, if you played those games or watched those games be played by other people, you know the sections I'm talking about. Uh, they they almost exclusively uh, some kind of poison area, <laughs> it seems. Uh, but every one of these games has a section that's a huge, massive pain in the ass uh, that no one likes. And... Um, I hit a wall in Dark Souls 3 because of that, because uh, I was at a point where uh, my two options were fight Osiris or fight um, Lothric and Lorien. And those were my two options. All other paths were close to me. I had finished everywhere else. Those were the two places I had that I could possibly go, and they both sucked. Uh, and I just it just felt bad because it felt like I was just stuck. And I couldn't do anything about it. Well, this game, Elden Ring, uh, solves that issue. Um, if you, if you re go, go to an area and you're fighting stuff there and it's just too hard for you, just just get up on the horse, Torrent, who is amazing. I love the horse. <laughs> the little yak horse. I'm not sure what exactly he is. But you just hop on him and you go somewhere. Just go somewhere else. The part you're fighting that sucks right now, just go. Leave. Don't, don't do it anymore. Go somewhere else. Um, and of course, these games all have the, the 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 idea of you can always just grind out and over level yourself at, to the point where, um, even if the environment that you're going through sucks, uh, the fighting in the area won't be as bad because you can get through the enemies pretty easily. So they're not as much of a hindrance. It's just the um, environmental hazards that you're having to deal with. And you can do that in this game. Um, and like I said, you can do it in the past games as well. But it sucked to do that because what were you doing? You were grinding the same enemies over and over and over and over and over and over again in the exact same area, never going anywhere until you hit the level that you were comfortable at with to proceed through the game. Uh, and I guess you could technically do that in Elden Ring, but you don't have to, because as I said, you can just pack up and go somewhere else. So there's so much to do, so much to explore, and so many little optional side dungeons or side areas or little bosses that you meet in the open world that you can you can fight if you want to or just leave and not fight ever if you don't want um and there's all these optional things to do that you're technically you know grinding because you're not progressing the main plot of the game and trying to beat the game you're doing side content but it doesn't feel like you're grinding because it's all new and fresh and some amazing thing that you're going to do so uh you know you can you can 
get to the, get yourself leveled up to the point where you're comfortable progressing through the hard content that was giving you problems. Um, but it doesn't feel like you were just sitting there mindlessly, mindlessly grinding for experience to level up. You, you were going out and doing things. So it's a way better experience. It's a way better experience all overall. And it's just incredible. Um, I love open, I love open world games. Um, and this one has really struck me as well because it, it kept with it the, the usual from software motto of not really, uh, not really helping the player out a ton, uh, not really telling them what to do or how to do it a lot of times. And, you know, for some players, some players out there, that's not the way they go. They don't appreciate um, the game not giving them a little bit of hand-holding. It's like, I want to play the fucking game, not waste my time with your dumb cryptic shit. Because you can't make something self-explanatory in a game for once. Fucking morons. And as you can see, some of them take it to a little bit of an extreme. But also, um, <laughs> also some game developers don't seem to appreciate it. They uh, uh, they went on Twitter and they've got blasted about it. I'm not going to blast them. I think they t privated all their Twitter accounts at this point. Uh, but um, they went on saying, you know, like the guys who made this game have no concept of... Um, no get concept of quest design or user experience or or any of that stuff and these are people from you know you know various sony games and some and a guy from um from ubisoft who worked on the horizon game and it feels like they are just at least especially from the ubisoft people it feels like it's just a little bit of salt uh, a little bit of saltiness uh, <laughs> because um uh, it caused people to to kind of meme on them a little bit, uh, especially this this photo here of uh, you know Elden Ring if it was made by Ubisoft, and I mean it's it's a little it's a little bit of exaggeration, but not much of one. Um, so it gets you to the point of like I have to talk about like a bigger picture here of of the gaming landscape. I suppose <laughs> I'm trying to make it sound grandiose here, but uh, a triple A game design. Uh, Especially with Ubisoft games and a lot of other open world games, they uh, there's massive, massive handholding. Um, they basically, and, and and it's because they're trying to, you know, create the game for a larger audience. I, I think, but the they overall are are treating the the player like they're too stupid to play the game. Like there there was constant handholding. Uh, there is no exp there is no true exploration. I know you know in Horizon games you can explore and stuff but there's not like real exploration you know like um every guy you go to says oh I, here's a quest um i want you to collect get me these you know get me these items or whatever here's the exact location where you go to get them here's the exact way you do it uh the game will constantly tell you where and where to go keep you on the path make sure you never get lost um make sure that you never have to think or reason out things or ever ever have to do anything other than push to the, push push some buttons on the controller to make the enemies die uh, <laughs> and um it it's it's a it's kind of a feel bad and over over time um all these games feel like feel the same like every assassin's creed game is the same largely uh you know they play every far cry game is exactly the same um and you know the Horizon games, while different than <laughs> different than the Assassin's Creed game and stuff like that, are largely the same as other open world games. <laughs> um, there is no true creativity or true originality. There's no uh, inspiration, I guess, or attempts to do anything outside of the cookie cutter ideas that have been proven to work in the past. The, these games, okay, so. Um, the introduction of micro microtransactions didn't help any, but um, overall, it's like a lot of these open world games in the AAA space. They they feel like these like soulless cash grabs. Like they weren't made because some guy really really wanted to make a game and make it awesome. Uh, it got made because a major studio decided they needed to make one. Um, they needed to get it out the door and they needed to get as much money from it as possible. And so everything is designed around those design aesthetics. Um, and a lot of them have like time, like insane timelines for how fast they, a new game needs to come out in the series, and it completely ruins the experience because you can't iterate. You can't iterate the game if you don't have time to do to do anything new. If if all you can do is a small update to the, the old game, uh, you can't 
do exciting and new things. And I, I like freedom in my games, especially my open world games. I, I want to be able to go and do stuff and explore and just, just have a fun time just exploring the world and, and finding new things and being amazed by all the stuff you can find out there. And the the, the AAA open world games I've played don't, don't do that. They're just the same crap all the time, and there's nothing fun to them. Um, the last one I had a lot of fun with was um, was Breath of the Wild. And I feel like the reasoning for that is because um, Nintendo has, uh, you know, everyone can have their issues with Nintendo and some of the things that they do, of course. But their, their, their design philosophy of their video games have always been, like, just make the game fun. Uh, you know, just make the fun game fun to play. That's it. Just make it fun. Like, that's that's the core importance of a video game is to be entertaining and fun to play. Um, and that's what Elden Ring captures. It's, it's fun to play it. Um, and, uh, a little, as a little aside here, the, the saltiness from Ubisoft and the, the Horizon team, uh, might be because, um, as I just, as I was just talking about it, uh, the original Horizon game, uh, <laughs> was, uh, overshadowed by Breath of the Wild when it came out. And now this new Horizon game comes out and it gets overshadowed by Elden Ring. So, um, those th that particular studio has not had a fun time with um, having these big major like a just amazing the you know genre defining you know generation defining games come out at the exact same time as their game. They have some bad scheduling it seems, but um, that's no reason to lash out at the games that are more popular than yours. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, but yeah, so that that, that kind of leads into um how this game is maintains its difficulty that the you know you typically think of from from soft games and and that's because there's a lot of stuff where you kind of have to to learn on your own the game's not going to hold your hand um it'll let you explore anywhere you can get it way in over your head and fight bosses that are way outside your your league uh that you could probably you know bash your head against until you beat them but you know it's very often better to just leave and come back later um, but but I, I I kind of I do kind of do appreciate just letting the the game letting me just kind of do whatever I want and make my make the mistakes I'm going to make, uh, learn the things I'm going to learn, um, and kind of you know kind of tell everything sort of I guess indirectly, but in, which is what some FromSoft does you know as their brand they tell their stories indirectly they tell their plots indirectly, uh, their quests are done indirectly um, in stark stark contrast of the other open world games that put everything on a waypoint on your map and never make you think about how where you need to go to complete a quest. Uh, this game does the exact opposite. You will meet NPCs and they will t talk to you about something. And um, it's up to you to find uh, find what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> uh, for instance, um, you'll meet a, a, a wolf man out in the woods and he's like, man, you know, if you ever find this other guy, let me know. Uh, because I'm looking to hunt him down because he's a traitor. And you're like, okay, sure. Uh, it doesn't put a waypoint on your map to tell you where that is. It doesn't tell you, you know, he doesn't really give you a lot of hints on where the other guy could be. But you're, you'll be exploring the world, and then you'll run into that guy, and you're like, holy shit, I know that guy. That's that's the dude that, that the, the wolfman's looking for. And then, you you know, you find him, and the wolfman shows up, and it's like, oh, thank you so much, you know, for doing this. And he gives you something awesome for it. Or, or for instance, the guy who was used heavily in the promotional materials for the game, uh, the, the guy everyone calls Pot Friend, or at least that's what I've, I've seen him called. Uh, his name, real name is Alexander in the game. Uh, but you just kind of stumble upon him, and you save him, and he's like, oh, hey, um... If you want to, you know, meet up later, uh, I'm going to this big, big tournament thing over in the east. So uh, you should come find me, and we'll we'll go do that together. And so, so that's like, holy crap! Okay, fine. Um, I'll, I'll try to remember as I'm going eastward from here, um, to be on the lookout for something that could possibly have a giant tournament in it. Uh, and hopefully, I'll run into him there. And and just the all of these other NPCs that you meet throughout the game that kind of hint at things and tell you things and you can decide to help them or not help them or take their advice or not take their advice. And it's just, it's just so, it's just so nice <laughs> to be able to just be, to, to play a game and be in wonder of what the next thing that you might find is. Um, 
what next crazy thing you'll run into like I, I'm not I'm not gonna spoil it for anyone all the, all the crazy stuff I've found in this game and I'm not even a third of the way through it I would say but just just the, all of the new stuff and all the weird mind bending bizarre things you've run into throughout this game is incredible and I love the fact that um I didn't spoil myself to it and everyone's been really super awesome about not doing a ton of spoilers um uh everyone's been like hey look i'm about to show you some stuff in Elden Ring. if you don't want to see it then, then you know you can skip the, this portion of the video <laughs> so you don't see it so people are really buying into this idea that um exploring the world and finding this stuff for yourself is very pivotal to the gameplay experience so i'm, I'm glad people have been doing that and i agree with them heavily um all of the just all the things you can find in this game uh, are just mind-boggling and incredible. I, I'm, I, I know I've gushed about it a little bit here, and I'm kind of repeating myself, but uh, it's very important that you understand this. This game has weird stuff in it, that, and it's incredible to run across it and just randomly stumble upon it. It's great. And now another favorite thing that I have <laughs> about this game. I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm gushing about this game, but this game is incredible. It is. And um, uh, one part portion of it that I really, really like is... Um, it feels like, at least from the stuff I've found, that you can build your character to function however you really want them to. So uh, that's been an issue with basically every other <laughs> Soulsborne game that exists. Um, and I guess in Sekiro, you don't have a build that you can do. You you are the one guy, and you, you know you can have certain abilities and stuff, but you are going to use a sword and parry people. There is no option so other than that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in, in, Soul, in the Soulsborne series in general, it's always felt like there's there's a couple of thing like types of things that you can try to build towards um, that just don't work. And these games are function largely as a, an RPG, I suppose, a combat RPG or an action RPG rather. But um, they are an RPG nonetheless. So you're leveling up your character. You level up certain stats for your character. Um, there's tons of different weapon types you can select and tons of weapons within those categories that you can play with. Um, there's tons of magic spells, uh, tons of different ways, you know, different ways to cast those spells and different statistics that govern different spells and how they work. And it's, it all gets very complicated, but it always felt like in other Soulsborne games, like there were, there were types of builds, like ways you could level up and different types of weapons and armor and magic spells you could try to use that were just not viable. They just wouldn't work. Um, and especially for the, the game that I have the most, most, uh, experience with Dark Souls three. Um, the first game, I first time I played the game, I wanted to try to do a faith build because I thought the lightning magic was cool and it seemed really, really awesome. You know, I saw some of the late game builds, um, they had some really cool faith magic, and I was like, "All oh, right, that's awesome. I want to do that." But faith builds are completely unviable at the start of that game. Uh, <laughs> they give you crap armor. They give you a heal spell. Uh, they give you a weapon that doesn't work with the main stat that you're leveling up, which is faith. <laughs> they give you a weapon that doesn't scale its damage off of that at all. So you're starting the game out in a huge handicap. Um, and then it takes forever to find like actual functional damaging spells in the, that school of magic. And um, if you want to use a weapon that that is, you know, scales its damage off of your faith spell that you're leveling up because you're a faith caster, uh, it takes forever to find one that's actually good. And it, it makes it it makes it it's, it feels bad. It's, it feels like you know they invalidated the way that you wanted to play the game. And uh, thus far with um, Elden Ring, that hasn't felt that way. Um, there, there are way more weapons, way more types of weapons. Uh, you can enchant them all very specifically to do different things. You can enchant most of them to um, scale off different things. So whatever weapon you like, you can make sure that it works with the stats that you're, you're leveling up. Or for the most part... And uh, as far as spells are concerned, um, they've made all these different types of spells and spell schools and ways to cast the spells. And they even have a, a level, a system that uh, allows you to level up your spells off of your strength stat. So so you can be this big beefy guy, but still be a very, very good spellcaster. 
And it's crazy to me, <laughs> the level of, of customization and viability they have in the game. It's just super awesome. And um, because of that, it has encouraged in me the, the idea of, you know, go out there and, you know, and bleed the game or whatever. And, but come back for a second playthrough and try something different. It'll be fun. You know, you, you can use use a whole different suite of weapons, uh, do different types of magic, level yourself up differently, you know, uh, wear different armor and instead of being like a quick dodgy boy, you know, be a big beefy tank man. And uh, to be a, I guess you can be a big beefy tank man that still casts spells a lot. You, you know, it just, all the options are, are just laid out before me and, and I'm, I'm excited to try more of them. And I've never said that about a uh, from soft game before. Uh, you know, I beat Dark Souls 3 and that was it. I didn't even want to do the DLC. I was like, no, I'm good. I'm good. I don't need to try it anymore. I'm fine. <laughs> I beat the game. I'm good. Uh, and I'm not saying that about this game. Um, I am already thinking about, you know, doing another playthrough and trying a different build. And it'll be amazing. I'm sure it will be. And um, the second time around, you know, I can look up all the stuff I'm not looking up right now and, and see how see what all the options out there are, you know. All the weapons I missed, all the spells I missed, all the bosses I missed, the, the areas, you know, all the secret wall, secrets I missed, all that stuff. Like all the quest lines I screwed up because, you know, I didn't know that the thing I did was going to kill one of the quest NPCs, you know, <laughs> uh, all that stuff. Uh, you know, there's just so much more. I feel like this game is going to take forever to beat the first time around and I still won't have everything that I could possibly find. And I'll find all this new stuff on subsequent playthroughs. And that's an incredible feeling. I really like it. Um, and the fact that, you know, that's just what they, they've sold. This is what they've sold you, you know. Um, the game the game is comes at its base price. And then it'll have expansions, I'm sure, if it follows um, up past from soft games. It'll have DLC that, that adds new areas to the game. But, um, you know, you, you, pay, you pay the single price for the game and you get this just a huge, amazing experience. And that's... Very rare, <laughs> unfortunately. It's very rare uh, in in the AAA games space at this point to to just give the company get money one time and they give you everything. Um, but it's a great feeling. It's very fun. And uh, if you if you if you're a fan of action RPGs, I don't know, I don't know if I have to say this bit at here at the end, but if you're a fan of action RPGs and you don't mind a little bit of difficulty. Um, but you, but you like the sense of exploration and all that stuff. And I highly encourage you to play this game. I mean, you, you have to know that at this point, right? <laughs> like I think every review site's given it game of the year and perfect scores and stuff like that. So uh, it's fairly, you can be fairly confident that the game is pretty good. And I think it, it hit a million, so, a million concurrent players on Steam, uh, which makes it top 10 top 10-ish somewhere in there for most played games on Steam ever. So it's apparently good. So if you like difficult games, like Action Adventure uh, or Action RPGs that are just really weird and will just let you go and do it and experiment and try stuff out, uh, this game is, is definitely for you. Uh, and it's definitely for me, and I'm really loving it. Uh, so once again, I'll say I'm still playing it on my streams. You should check it out. I'll put the playlist... I'll put the playlist in the video description. Also, I have a Discord server now. So if you want to join my Discord server, the link for that will be in the description as well. <laughs> Anywho, thank you for, for sticking around and rambling. Let me know your thoughts about Elden Ring. Obviously, this is open forum. Everyone, everyone can give their thoughts. And I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>